So, thank you. Um, so we record these as usual and we share them on our YouTube. So feel free to review this later or share it with your friends. Um, so this monthly meeting, we're going to talk about the new policy committee that um, has been developing and then as well, the Aston by-election. So Aston by-election was crazy. Only five parties were there and Fusion was one of them. So good job and good job to everyone who came. So, you know, we should all be proud that we're all part of history there. All right, next page. Yes, we are. All right, cool. So just we'll start with the, the normal party stuff. So we'll start with the membership and finance update, talk a bit about Aston. And so, you know, I'd really welcome everyone to just come in and say about, you know, what they learned from that, what they thought about it, all of that, discuss it. Policy Dev Committee introductions. So we're having the housing affordability workshop immediately after this where we'll, you know, um, share information and start to scope out how we want to approach housing affordability and our policy for that. Um, and we're having an upcoming talk with Andrew Fraser about the Australian Republic movement. Hmm. With membership, um, we have a total of 1,795, which is good. Um, the cutoff to be registered is 1,500. So we worked really hard to get to that point. Um, we did have a slight drop in Victorian members, which I guess happened because when we were doing our phone banking, we were having a chance to just really engage and, and say, hey, do you know who we are? Do you know what Fusion is? And I think, you know, values can change. And by that point, they weren't interested. So we lost some of them. Sorry, Saha, how many do we have now? You said we, we need one. How many do we have? We need 1,500. Oh, can you see my screen? Oh, I wasn't looking at the screen, sorry. Okay, no um, worries. Yeah, it's 1,795, so... yeah. Oh, yay, okay. Pretty, pretty good, mm. pretty good. Um, Next page, finance update. Michael, would you like to cool. speak to this? Thank you. And uh, just on the previous thing, just to, I think my, from my understanding, the some of that is going to come from, some of those drop-offs and things are going to come off, um, come from when we do follow-ups and, and, and sort of check-ins, there will be some level of, um, sort of adjustment. There'll be just people who have sort of fallen off that are still on our records that may um, sort of that we that will sort of yeah we'll take people off if they haven't uh, been responsive for certain amounts of time as well. So the 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 up and down is is pretty common. Um, so in the finance in the finance world, as usual, trying to go through this really quickly. Um, so a bit of a different kind of month, obviously, with a with a by election. So lots of activity. Um, the um, Oh, I thought we started with the, the profit and loss with this. Um, so the balance sheet, um, there's a bit of a few things in flux at the moment uh, with a bit of uh, some reimbursements and various things to be uh, processed still. Mm -hmm. So some things that are sitting in as placeholders, which we'll see in the profit and loss report. Um, but the <clears throat> where uh, we've um, where we've currently got sort of twelve thousand in assets, uh, twelve thousand three hundred in assets there. Um, the uh under the liabilities 6900 that's all that's mostly things like um reimbursements of all sorts of sort of an adjustments to be made around lots of uh a candidate candidate uh, expenditure and, and, and campaign expenditure and stuff like that so um we have spent a fair bit of money on the a little bit sort of fair bit of our money on the um on the election and down to net assets of 5400 um, which is what we should be doing. We should be spending money on, in elections. Um, I think the profit and loss was the previous slide or was it the next one? Um, so just the details of the, the ins and outs. Um, so this includes, so under under our donations, this includes sort of a uh, both uh, money that came in just directly to the the, 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 the the normal party channels, as well as money gone that went directly into um Owen's campaign page, which also, which which is effectively sort of immediately allocated to 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 that campaign. So a lot of that was um, covered by uh, Owen himself, which then those donations will go to go to reimbursing him. Um, so under the operating expenses, we have some of the normal stuff of IT and various things, but we have a large amount there of outs, um, outstanding reimbursements. So this includes 
the donations that were made directly to his page, as well as a $4,000 allocation that was um, from the party coffers to go towards campaign expenses. Um, so um, given that at the end of that, sort of that net profit at the end there, um, with with it with it being negative four thousand, um, that's actually a pretty good. Um, so we we made a sort of a big spend, but in terms of, um, well, it basically means that all, based on all the other things, we still um, where usually we will not receive as much other kind of donations um, to cover sort of our other kinds of expenses. Uh, we still received as well enough to sort of cover our normal sort of month to month. So um, a, a net negative of for the month, but this is an important month to spend some money. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, that, that, so that's all I'll go with with finance for the moment. And unless there's any questions there, um, feel free to interrupt, but I'll probably go through quickly. Um, and I'll also speak on the policy development committee. So, um, an email. So, so the, the policy development committee over the last couple of months has been working on uh, procedures and some structures in, to to put in place to uh, for us to really sort of start properly expanding and and enhancing our policy platform. Um, there's a lot of work to do. There's a lot of work to do in both the procedural um, and sort of setting up that stuff still. Um, but there's way more work to do in actually building up the platform, uh, and and we need sort of everyone's help for that. So. Um, as I've mentioned in, in a few few other times, this um, the the point of this, or the most one of the most important things around this, are that is that it is member driven. So we want to make sure that everyone has the opportunity to be involved, uh, as well as uh, making sure that it, things are kept to a high standard of evidence and and, and quality mm -hmm. and justification. So um, an email went forward uh, recently um, with a couple of links in it. One of those was the policy prioritization survey uh, for all members. Now, unfortunately, uh, this accidentally went through with an old link uh, that had a slightly incomplete version of the form there. So apologies if you ran into any issues there uh, in, in filling that out. Um, and it was not really in the state it was supposed to, but um, a lot of people have still filled it out and there's a lot of really interesting stuff in there so far. So. Um, We'll be going through the the results of that over the next uh, little while, and we'll be trying to sort of present those those um, that data in the next monthly meeting. Um, the next, the other item was um, the uh, there's, there's another form in there, just which was an intake form. I've just got the link there, um, but we'll probably try to make that available in other ways later. And again, as I mentioned, trying to make sure that everyone can sort of be part of this. Uh, the idea is to have a single channel where uh, members can can submit resources and, and policy suggestions and things like that. Um, and these will all go to sort of a single register, which will be all so, so to make sure that everything is sort of captured and considered uh, when we do move into sort of specific policy development, as well as sort of prioritizing the the, the starting up of policy stuff. Um, and then finally, I'll, I'll, um, I won't speak on it too much, but we have, uh, there was also a sort of call out for a um, our first work stream and we're going to be focusing, focusing first on affordable housing so expanding on that policy uh, after this meeting um there should have been an email so if you're if you're RSVP, rsvp to that uh, i believe that would have been a separate email a separate a zoom link um but uh that will be that will be commenced then and now this is using a process that we've developed or that we're working with um that should we'll start off in the stage of sort of information gathering and and sort of defining the problem uh, and, the, and the scope of this to sort of make sure we're all on the same page. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can sort of really start making some progress and really expand the the, the core product of, of of the party, as it were. Um, I think it's it's well overdue. So yeah. um, Thanks, hoping, to, hoping to get everyone's sort of uh, input and um, any with any questions sort of ongoing, feel free to email uh, policy at fusionparty.org.au as well. Um, and we'll, we'll get back to you as quick, quick, quick as we can. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So that um, housing, affordable housing policy meeting will be happening after this meeting at eight. Great. All right. So astonishing Aston. So unfortunately, Owen can't make it tonight. Um, he's at another event, just schmoozing. Um, so I think this is a good chance for people to talk about um, their experiences. Just a few stats to summarize what happened on, on you know, during that campaign. Um, we had seven volunteers phone banking, um, plus two, 
placed 115 calls and 60 SMS plus emails. So there was a lot of engagement over that time. Um, we had 15 volunteers pre-polling, 23 volunteers on election day, which was excellent. Um, and the end result was we got 2.85% votes. Um, yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a really good start for us. We're a pretty unknown brand. Um, there's still a lot of people who are not aware of us. Um, so we have a lot of work to do there, but pretty good for a start. Um, Miles, you've got your hand up. Did you want to speak to this? Yeah, so what um, most of these comparisons there for the volunteer numbers we pulled are coming from the Victorian state election last year. So we had uh, candidate Simon Nieslaw in Bentley, which is uh, sort of close-ish to Aston uh, on, a, on, a, on a sort of large scale. So um, the uh, so for phone banking, we had an increase in the number of phone bankers. We had uh, significantly more volunteers. We had a really large crew volunteering and we had a whole lot more uh, volunteers on election day as well. And um, it really showed out in the results. Uh, the previous record, 2.13%, um, was a uh, lower house run for John August in Bennelong in the federal election in 2022. So uh, for a new candidate with very little name recognition, we've absolutely smashed that record. And uh, there's, I think there's a, a number of reasons for that, not just... Um, not just building off previous momentum. And so on um, on the next slide, there's a few of the things that we've done which were new, um, which were new for, for this election. And uh, the two of the biggest changes were that we had a significantly improved media and, and messaging presence. And, uh, but we also had much better coordination on the day and, um, and better processes around volunteer coordination. Uh, Mel, you've got your hand up. Did you want to say or ask something? Yep. I just wanted to uh, mention that there are photos and videos from Aston, which are on the shared drive that the media team has. And there are also, I've put some links to them in Discord. And if anybody else wants links to download those and uh, needs them or just wants to see them just to uh, contact me in some way, or I can pass on to you and they can contact you. Mm. So we do. We will have a call out for uh, volunteers, uh, particularly around social media and comms, at the end of this meeting, or at the end of this presentation. And so uh, the um, one of the successes was getting heaps of new volunteers involved in social media and in comms, and uh, and and making that process much much easier and much more inclusive. So um, I'm quite happy to talk about that in detail for anyone who's more interested. But um, the four of the big things we did were that, that improved process for collaborative social media posting, a uh, streamlined press release process where uh, we um, had significant improvements there. We also did a lot of uh, media analysis and strategy behind the scenes. And to sort of tie in with that as well, there was uh, interview coaching and prep for Owen, which really paid off. Um, and so... To tie in with that as well, we did a lot of local networking with with local organisations, and um and 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 that just sort of boosted the whole campaign. Uh, my favourite catchphrases to come out of this were um I kind of had two which I really really liked. One was a uh, climate rescue and open source innovation. So Owen being uh, a developer in the tech sector, particularly with NFTs and um uh, blockchain based um technology so open source is a really big thing for him and there's lots of ways that open source can tie into other policies so we had a really cohesive policy platform there which tied together really nicely and um one of the one of those connecting themes was ubi and so one of my favorite talking points there was ubi supports adaption to a changing world okay cool um so Looks like the next one is about our next event. So now let's just open the floor and have people talk about um, getting involved and what they learnt and just share share your experience. Who would like to start? Looks like Melissa. Uh, Bryony, you were there. Um, yeah, it was, 
it was I, I'm, I can make observations that it, it was about just where I was and that was there were 11 libs handing out and the libs often pay their volunteers um four labor two greens and then two of us which was and everyone was very steeled as they walked through they didn't want to engage with anyone there were those who took every single flyer and then there were those who didn't take any and then there were those who would take just libs or labor or greens the only guy that just took fusion was a guy with pink hair who came through and went I'll take that one and, <laughs> and nice. the green the greens volley said to me you've cornered your market and that that's what um I I I think I look I loved the flyer um it was really I really wanted to read it I thought it was very appealing I think we could have been stronger on um framing messages or issues that were more common to more of the population so climate rescue was there but some of those messages in that could have been tweaked and the uh what was it i think cost of living or housing could have been there um so harmony was there cost of living could have been in harmony um i, I and i liked the harmony the you know i, I thought it was it was really good um, but I think with that policy and yeah. policy and comms can work together more next time. I think we we didn't organise ourselves to work together to get to sort of work that out. Yeah, we did um, decide four weeks before the election was on, and we were we were keen. I was just like, let's let's go. I knew um, Owen was keen for it, um, and we were there to support him. But yeah, four weeks doesn't give us yeah all yeah. The time. Um, if I can maybe mention something, the results that Owen got now, I, before I got involved in Fusion, was involved for a number of years in the Australian Sex Party, and the amount of time it took before the most effective candidates got 2.8% was about two or three election cycles. To get mm. that straight out of the mark, uh, certainly both my own reaction and that of a bunch of other people I know who've been doing politics for years is with the number of volunteers you had, with the funding that we that we had in this election and, you know, starting out from scratch, it is an exceptional result. And mm -hmm. it's a result that predicts if you keep, if, if we all keep going for sort of five to ten years, we will overtake the Greens in terms of numbers if we're starting out at like it's there's there's a lot of things that I can say I do I think when you have a small number of volunteers it's better to have one volunteer at each booth than to have two in the one booth even if it means that you can't get some of the people walking in from two directions but uh you know you put the you put your volunteer wherever the majority of the traffic is uh and if we uh start now for the next like states and state and federal elections to get volunteers and have enough to cover every booth properly and we have enough messaging and we start to go to various groups of people who uh, share you know who, sh who are passionate about the policies the sort of geek and tech community for the uh, for the open source policies for environmental activists and people who care about the environment for the environmental policies and so on and start from there and participate in meetings go on radio go on television at any excuse let the image spread keep messaging fusion is the answer then you know 2.8 percent becomes 10 percent becomes 15 percent becomes balance of power and mm -hmm. multiple seats in in parliament and policies being enacted into law mm -hmm. excellent thank you um michael uh yeah so i mean i, I that's that's really awesome to hear um so that's, that's um Really awesome to hear that, uh, that enthusiasm. Um, we, I think, on some of the points around the uh, like sort of policy and um, sort of messaging and things like that. Yeah, like I, I certainly agree with Brianie that um, there'll be all sorts of lessons learned from sort of everything that we do. Obviously, we got to make sure that we are always trying to improve and and uh, and are introspective. Um, shouldn't be shouldn't shouldn't shy away from anything that uh, sort of anything that we maybe did uh, not as good as well. 
Um, but I think with with on with um, so what I mentioned with the policy p- platform being, um, it's as I said, I'm certainly proud of the policy platform we have, and as and as well as of the sort of the constituent branches. There's a lot of work that's involved that has gone gone into that and stuff like that as well. Um, but uh, there's a lot of work to be done as well. So there's a lot of um, there's a lot that we can do to. Uh, so, so that a candidate can hit the ground running, it has a lot more resources behind them to um, to sort of talk eloquently and and um, sort of come with solutions and and yeah, meeting that meeting it towards the um, to towards the electorate and making sure that sort of we're speaking to sort of issues that people care about, but are coming with uh, sort of clever and well thought out solutions. I think is, is sort of really is uh, I'm looking forward to being the goal for the next uh, for the next little while. Yeah, for sure. Brian? Just that, yeah, I think more core flutes could have made the difference, could have made a bit more of a difference. I think three core flutes at each booth, of course, it's the money, it's the money, but three core flutes is when you become visible. Oh, A-frames would be good and bunting and... All sorts of things, but uh, I also think. Sorry, Sorry, Melissa, we're just um, going by like a hand up order. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, Was that everything you wanted to say, Brian? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Alex? um, I wanted to clarify one thing. I I do believe that um, reducing the cost of living was on the flyer on the back attached to a statement about open source software, but. I absolutely agree that it could have been like more fr- like given given a higher place, so people found it easier. I guess because yeah, that how cost of living and housing, I think, was I think everyone experienced was the number one issue to constitu- constituents. Um, the only other thing I wanted to mention was because I, I did a lot of the pre polling, and so I've I've had a lot of time to try out different strategies of trying to engage people and i found to the people that didn't want any uh, saha's already heard this one so she's probably sick of me by now but um to the people who didn't want any of the flyers um i had a lot of fun like asking people oh you must have done your homework then and if they you know regardless of whether they responded yep or no i just kept walking i responded with you must be voting number one for oh and then yeah good on you and that like got a giggle out of a lot of people, which I found helped. And I had one guy um, who made it all the way to the door come back to me for a flyer because he was like, I'll, I'll like that one, mate, and, you know, went in. So I think we could have a lot of fun, yeah, try like trying to be just more engaging rather than just being, you know, you know mannequins that hand out flyers, but... Maybe we can have another conversation about that another time. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it's just confident and it's um, relating to people as people. Because, you know, I I think I heard a lot of the um, Liberal volleys were quite stiff and agitated (laughs) because it can get competitive, but, you know, people remember that. Let's see. Oh, Kieran, would you like to say anything? Uh, only just expanding on what Bryony said, that I think um, one of the lessons learned and probably a focus going forward is just being really um, local, particularly in by-elections with how we're approaching things. Like I don't know how many people in Aston really cared about a UBI or cared about a lot of the things that we had on the flyer on the whole, and even though it's our policy, I think we need to um, maybe spend a week <laughs> or whatever it takes, like however t- how much time we've got, just thinking about where we're going and what policies may be relevant to those those boosts in those areas um, rather than just our overall policy and what's the best that we feel that we have overall. I think um, it may just need a little bit more um, thought in that kind of four weeks or eight weeks or however long we've got as we're preparing. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, Alex, did you want to speak again or just kept your hand up? Yeah, Melissa? 
Yep. Uh, sorry, it takes me a moment to unmute because I'm on a, a mobile phone. Uh, yeah, what was I saying? So uh, I think one of the things is that different electro uh, uh, electorates require different emphasis. And the campaign Owen ran would have been absolutely perfect for Brunswick where he lives and would have been like like every like the way he presented everything would have been completely home run. Aston has a lot of people who are like, you know, mar married couples with families in suburban homes, struggling with mortgages. And a lot of them have stuff that resonates with a lot of our other policies. A lot of the climate policies are very much of interest. There are a lot of people who are tempted to vote for the Greens for climate, but think that the Greens are a little bit too radical uh, economically. And not even so much that they're radical with their goals, but... Uh, for example, I walked up to a Greens candidate and asked them, so you want to, uh, you know, cap rents and stop more, stop more and and mortgage repayments. So, so you'll get the Reserve Bank then not to uh, increase the interest rates further. And he said, no, no, the, the Reserve Bank can increase the interest rates further. We just make sure people don't pay more on their mortgages. And I said, well, banks borrow money from the Reserve Bank and then rent it and then lend it out to people so if the reserve bank interest rates go up and the bank interest rates are, are, are don't all the banks in Australia will go under and they were like oh that why didn't I think I'm not sure like this is the thing that worries people if we can come across that we want to make sure people can afford to pay their mortgage we want to make sure that the country doesn't have orange skies and bushfires like twenty, like twenty nineteen, we want to uh, use evidence. We want to be an evidence based party where we use science to solve problems. That will resonate with Aston, but it's probably a good idea if you know in Aston there's somebody who looks a bit you know if uh, somebody like Owen's mum or dad had run Aston and Owen had run Brunswick like in a state or federal election, that would be a perfect set. That would be. Uh, a perfect setup, and each each electorate paired to a candidate who lives the life of that place and gets the people there, and then all the brochures, all the core flutes, everything tailored to that. Then, I mean, the fact is, we got two point eight percent without doing that. If we'd done that, we'd have gotten five straight out of the mark, which suggests that this is a party that can run for off, that can you know eventually go go for government. Yeah, we have a good chance. You know, when I was um, trying to catch up with all the volleys and thank you again so much, it's always good to have people join the team, join the group, because, um, you know, we like to see new faces and like to see how you interact with what we're doing. Um, but what I heard unanimously was when I asked about how do you see, how do you describe what fusion is? How do you characterise it to your friends and family? A lot of people were saying future-focused, um, evidence-based policy, um, credible, uh, caring about the well-being of everyone. I thought that was great. I mean, just everyone was saying that same thing, and it's pretty much what I say. So future-focused, evidence-based, well-being for everyone. Very beautiful message. If you put that on a if you put that on a HTV for Aston, my goodness, like I this this is what a lot of people want to hear. They are sick of Luddites. People mm. are sick of having slow, broken internet and uh, not being able to work. Like Aston, slow, broken internet means a almost an hour commute into the city for those people with uh, office jobs, which had they had better internet, they could work from home. So although you wouldn't think of Aston as a technology-faced like area, like my parents live there and I live in the next electorate along in Casey. And it is absolutely the sort of issues that people are extremely passionate about. But when when they talk about uh, UBI, if UBI is presented as let's stop wasting money making people who are looking for work jump through hoops, that uh, you know uh, we won't be paying any more to just let people who don't have work be able to survive, then we're doing with the current regime you will get a lot of support for UBI if it's presented in the right way. Yeah, I think that connectivity is very underrated. It means that, you know, we can connect with rural Australia a lot more. 
Um, and then it also means that we don't have to be traveling. So if you can work from home, there's less emissions on the roads. Absolutely. It's a link. That's the link between the technology and the environmental side. And a lot of the, there's a lot of potential links between technology, technological innovation and environmental responsibility. And that's where we can really distinguish from the Greens, who are also environmentally focused, but seem to think we should, you know, I don't, I don't want to say seem to think we should go back living in caves, but some of my friends in the Greens seem to have that sort of a mindset. Yeah, well, that's why I like to say fusion is bright green environmentalist. So it's that combination of um, techno progressivism and caring for the environment. But I guess wanting to live in a cave would be, I guess, dark green. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, dark brown, maybe. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I think, a, uh, yeah. Well, there's lots of uh, lots of policy ideas, um, and I, I mean, I think every lots of people have them. There's lots of great discussions in the Discord and stuff as well. Um, should make sure that uh, any sort of strong ideas you guys have, make sure these go into the the, the, policy, the policy intake page, and you send them off to the PDC so that um, we can we can try to get those developed into sort of really well articulated ideas that we can um, sort of yeah, again, giving more more ammunition and and um, resources for candidates. Um, I, I wanted to say as well, just uh, like there's a few things we talked about in terms of um, I, like I, I definitely agree with with all being able to sort of focus on particular things or but there was also a, a degree where a candidate does need to speak to bit about the things they're passionate about. Um, and obviously a few of those things on there are, are sort of a, are really important to Owen. Um, there's a bit of a balance there, but I think yeah, we definitely need to be um, sort of marketing to a degree to, to, to the to the wider groups. Um, but also, uh, just a, a quick shout out, I think it's really important is that um, running in an election in general is really hard. It's very time consuming. It's very stressful. It's very emotionally draining. Um, and um, it's just yeah, generally very expensive as well. Um, uh, so, uh, I, I mean, just I, I, see, I hope uh, Owen's sort of listening in. I think we should sort of definitely offer Oh, and some props for um, so putting putting himself out there and and um, really sort of putting in that effort. And I'm sure he's sort of learned a lot and gained a lot. I hope he's gained a lot from this experience. Um, and and yeah, the the sort of on to the next one. Really, we'll um, hopefully we can sort of keep building on it and and uh, and getting getting a lot more going. Yeah. yeah uh... Okay. Well, is there anything else anyone would like to share before we move to the next item? I'll just I'll, I'll second uh, what Michael said to, con to congratulate Owen on doing a fantastic uh, job. I saw he put in so much energy and so much effort in this. And it is, given the newness of the party and of the candidate, it is a record-breaking record -breaking outcome. Yeah, I mean, Owen was the best candidate for it, really, <laughs> driven, uh, Miles. Yeah, so I uh, have a couple of reminders. One is that we have the campaign debrief coming up. So I had a poll running to see which times were best. And the best time is mon um, for, uh, for everyone is Monday, uh, Monday evening. So that's Monday the 10th. So I've just been making a couple of event tags for that. So there's the RSVP there, please, for Zoom. And the other little reminder is that um, we need to be compiling the reimbursements for everyone so if you have an amount you'd like to reimburse please send that through to owen sooner rather than later and we do have a small amount um we do have an allowance uh, for volunteers as well so if you spent money on transport or food during the day you can also request a reimbursement for that uh so um, please grab those and get those in and also try and make it to the debrief as well uh, there's a lot of things, new things we tried, and there's a lot of things we did really well, and there's a lot of things that we need to um, so, sort of clarify uh, how 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 they went and how we can um, sort of recapture that success for next time. So good turnout will really, really be helpful to cement the things we learned. Yeah, so the debrief was on Monday night? Yes, uh, 5 p.m. Nice. Excellent. All right, so an event that we have coming up Um at the next monthly meeting, 3rd of May, we have the Australian Republic talk um, on the 17th of April. So that's coming up. Um, actually, Miles, did you organize this one? 
Yes, yes, I did. Do you want to speak to it? <laughs> There's uh, not a huge amount to say. It's a, um, we'll be meeting. So Andrew is uh, on the national executive as well as the Queensland convener for the Australian Republic. And he'll be speaking a little bit about the, um, why the ARM is advocating for a republic and why Australia should be moving towards a republic as a system of government. So this is a uh, something which we don't have an official policy position in Fusion, but there is a lot of interest in it. And so the ARM works across, as the Australian Republic movement works across a number of different parties. In particular, they're helping to coordinate the um, Friends of the Republic parliamentary group, which includes uh, parliamentarians from Labor, Liberal, Greens, and um, several crossbenches as well, various independents. So uh, this, this is an organization which we can potentially forge strong links with and gain uh, a large amount of support, same way that the ARM supports all of the other parties who will commit to bringing a republic on board. And so if we do make a decision as a party to get on board with the Republican movement, then um, we'll be joining a much, much larger movement around Australia. And uh, so this this event will be to to talk around that, look at the policies, um, look at the look at the kind of structures that are proposed and to think about where we could go from here. Yeah, Michael. Um, yeah, just to just to kind of add to that, with um, I mean, Miles mentioned, there's um, no current sort of fusion policy on uh, the on the Australian Republic, but uh, some of the constituent parties do have policies, sort of either for it or around it. Um, from a from a sort of a general sense, with um, we'd love to be able to put on more of these kinds of events. Uh, sometimes they can just be um, uh, that they don't don't necessarily have to be things that we are. Uh, advocating for or have in our policy platform, we will try to make sure that they are as relevant and and uh, as possible and and um, things that can sort of potentially lead to developing policy. Uh, but we want to make sure that there is also kind of a yeah, sort of a sharing of ideas and where we can uh, get particular experts or, or particular speakers to to jump in and talk about things that can um, that can both be used as resources, but also just to sort of help people learn things and um, help people share ideas. That that that's sort of uh, that'll be that'll, I'm really keen to try to get more of those done so uh if anyone is aware of sort of anyone in this, in, who, who might be interested in um in this kind of thing or um would like to propose a particular kind of event feel free to also sort of let us know um you can do it through all the various channels it'll go sort of there's a few people who can sort of be involved in organizing it but policy at fusion that all day that you can be can certainly be one um yeah and, uh, and and yeah, I mean, if there's if there is enough of um, sort of a desire for sort of putting some prioritization on this topic, um, there's a lot of people who probably don't understand maybe why a republic might be necessary or, or might be might be might be, be desirable. Um, so I mean, I'm I'm keen to 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 attend this and um, ask even ask some of those questions that maybe I have or or I think that other people might have or, or that aren't often explained. Um, a lot of the time so keen to keen to sort of get that that information yeah i'd be interested to know the implications of changing um yeah so just to um rehash what michael was saying um we want to have more of these education sessions so they might not necessarily be fusion policy but we had a, a nuclear education event which i think was very useful for a lot of people because it's still quite a controversial topic and not a lot of people know where to look to learn about that so if you have anything that you'd like, that you're very passionate about and you'd like to see if it's an interest to fusion, please reach out and we can organize an education event as well. Okay, so Miles, help wanted. Yeah, so following, um, so during, during the election, we did put out a few calls for volunteers, but a lot of our uh, engagement was with local members who were in Aston or near enough in Aston to get involved with the campaign directly. But we all, we found that um, one of the things we found was that there was a lot of people who were really keen to get involved and support, but weren't um, but, but weren't actually local to the area. We're, we're quite far away, maybe on the other side of Victoria or just completely from another state. So uh, a, a really important sort of learning coming out of Victorian state election was how we can, um, what, and because this happened back then as well. So one thing we learned was to think more about how we can help get people from interstate, particularly from elsewhere around Australia, to participate if we don't have any other big election campaigns or projects going. So, uh, so with that in mind, there's a lot of stuff which can be done remotely to help and support the party. 
And um, this can be either done at a national level or done from uh, interstate somewhere for a, a local or, or state campaign somewhere particularly. So uh, one of the, the big things at, at the moment in between elections is for um, having current events analysis and commentary. So we can, we can be, be so much more relevant to what's happening in Australia, but we can also talk to our members and our supporters as well and say, this is what we think about these current events. And there's a lot of ways that can look like um, there's different kinds of uh, comms or communications we can put out around current events, but broadly, broadly speaking, we can help anyone who doesn't have that experience or confidence. We can train you up to be really, really good spokesperson or, or, or even just to offer your opinion on these kind of events in a way that, um, well, hopefully align with, uh, you know, where we want to see the direction of the party. So um, send an, an email through to comms, the comms committee. Uh, the Another big thing is party engagement. And so this is really huge during elections. We have a big phone banking team to, to support the local campaigning. But we also can, there's also things we can do with that in between elections as well. And so part of that is um, to uh, help, help to coordinate other events and, you um, uh, sign up organizers and, and get capacity for online things in between elections. Now, regarding elections specifically, there are a number of upcoming elections. So uh, um, over the next couple of years, we've got two council elections in Queensland and Victoria. We've got a number of state elections, Queensland, New Northern Territory and ACT. And then the next federal election is going to be somewhere between 2024 and 2025, uh, end of 24 or start of 25, more or less. So we'll need to we'll, we'll need people on the campaign organizing teams for those as well, particularly for the federal election, where there will be a huge amount of candidates and a, a huge number of campaigns running. And we will need as, as many people as possible on board to help take that load. So campaign organizing, there's a heap of different sort of sub roles in there. But essentially, all you need to do is have a little bit of time to put in uh, maybe maybe an hour or a couple of hours a week just to help coordinate or do some little jobs and roles. And uh, we can um, we have like. All, all the kind of descriptions laid out for what jobs are needed for that campaign team. But um, there, there's a bit of interest in um, there's a couple of people interested in uh, running policy related events. So we've had a couple so far and there's people talking about doing more as well. That's another great way you can contribute as well. Uh, you, If you know someone who is an expert in a particular area, um, they can be government electoral policy or it can be something else which we could potentially build po electoral policy around or even just something of interest to fusion party members then please do consider um getting in touch with them to come and ha have an event and speak to fusion party members and supporters and it's quite easy to organize and quite straightforward and, and again we can help you with all of that but you just need to do the legwork to <laughs> if, if you have people who you think have something important to say then we'd love to help you to get those people to come forward. Uh, Melissa, did you have a question? Sorry about this, it takes me a moment to unmute. So yeah, no, I've definitely got ideas about how we can start getting a larger base of members and volunteers in the medium to long term, and also uh, funding that some of them might you know, I'm, I'm pretty confident that if we were able to, if there's anybody who is a student at a university, uh, we could help them to get a university student, student uh, society, a fusion student society going. And that will almost definitely bring on a fantastic group of people. And apart from uh, that, like, there's lots of things that we can do to, uh, like, in the tech sector, there are a lot of companies that may actually like a lot of policies, particularly re relating to open source and things like right to repair. There are some sort of, especially smaller to medium businesses that are being stepped on by large corporates that may donate and could allow us to go into an election campaign with several hundred thousand dollars or maybe even a million in campaign funding. Love that. Yeah, I think, like, I can't guarantee it's going to work, but I have some ideas that should work. I mean, I've been involved in the Australian Sex Party for years and years before this and have been, you know, playing around in politics for a while. So there are things we can certainly try. I can't promise, but I can promise to try, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think we're keen on all of those ideas. And I think what we're learning um, um, at Fusion HQ is, I guess, 
um, how to uh, empower our members to to um, contribute little bits at a time. I think, um, you know, we understand it can be a little bit intimidating at first. So we're now learning how to get people on board uh, towards the things that they want to achieve, you know, achieve in the world, achieve for themselves, achieve with the party. Yeah. Yeah, and there's also an opportunity in that what used to be the Australian Sex Party and then became Reason Australia is kind of, well, I'd say it's falling apart and shutting down. Uh, Fiona Patton's lost her seat and I don't think he's coming back in and it's all gone a bit quiet. There are some people there with a lot of skill sets who uh, have policy ideas very, very similar on uh, a lot of topics, I think they, they align well with fusion policy. I mean, that's how you got me. I discovered fusion and uh, wanted a party that's actually alive to be a part of. And there are some really good people I think I might be able to headhunt. Oh, okay, yeah. People who, like, know, like, numbers people and people who have various different skill sets, uh, mm. and, uh, particular things we need, but I'll... I'll ask around everyone, and I think some some people I think might be ready to. Uh, I already had one or two people come and help out in uh, Aston without actually officially changing parties, but just lent their expertise. But I think the worst things get with reason as it sort of starts to shut down. The more the more of those people will be able to get. Yeah, and I think um from the discussions that I've been having with people lately is. Um, we want to see more activation in the community. So I think supporting more um, local groups happening um, at each of the states and just, I guess, participating in um, events that are aligned with Fusion, just, just being visible. I think that's what we really need to do more of. Yeah. Yeah. I can think of at least two community groups that are likely to be a source of extremely passionate, extremely interested people who have a lot of skin in the game. One of them is the right to repair movement and businesses yes. that repair stuff that are facing an existential crisis from companies locking down tech and it's do or die for them. And this is the one party that's likely to actually have their back. These are people who, these are businesses, they have money, they have massive motivation. Uh, anyone who hasn't already watched, like there's a person on YouTube, his name is Lewis Rossman, who talks about this. He actually ran a YouTube channel showing people how to rep how to re repair Apple products and laptops and things at a chip level and kind of migrated from actually showing people how to do this highly technical work so anyone could do it to uh, fighting Apple and others who are trying to prevent people from being able to fix things. So that's one group. The other group that's even bigger is the transgender community, which is being attacked by one of the two major parties. I mean, I'm trans myself, and basically every election is a referendum on whether or not I am stripped of my rights, stripped of my ID, and possibly sent to jail. And there are a few things that can motivate you in politics as much as something like that. And I think if we are clear that we are supportive of the uh, trans community, which I'm pretty sure we are, that will, you know, I, that will give us a supply of extremely motivated people for whom it's an existential issue to make the party succeed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and right to repair is really good for rural again. I, I would really like to connect with rural. I think um, rural Australia just seems to be shooters, farmers, fishers and the gnats. Um, and I think, like, they just need more attention. They need to be part of the conversation. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. Rural would benefit from right to repair, but I'm not sure if this necessarily is where the awareness is. Uh, I think I think it's worth a try. But the people I know who care about right to repair are geeks, people who are involved in tech. Oh, I think we want to save money, <laughs> cost of living. Yeah, but it's a matter of who, like, it's not necessarily who benefits, but who already is passionate about it. Certainly, if we could raise the awareness in rural areas, it's an entry point into uh, into rural areas. I suspect that climate change is also a massive entry point to, to rural areas because farmers can see what's going on. They are aware of the climate impacting their production. 
every year. And you can't, you know, you can't bullshit them because they can see with their own eyes what is happening. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there are some people out there who, you know, they, it doesn't matter, Jesus is coming type of stuff, type of thing. But the ones who are not like that, uh, may find that the, uh, you know, they don't want to vote for the Nationals or the Liberals. The Labour Party may not, you know, have give, have sent the message to them that we're listening to you and we care about the about regional areas. So if we get good regional policy and we show that we care about regional areas, I think there's an entrance point there. But mm -hmm. also, don't underestimate the trans community. It could get you it could get you three or four thousand volunteers, really passionate ones. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mel. So, yeah. Bye. Yeah, so, so, just I, I agree. We have to make regional inroads, or we're just competing with the Greens. And um, I think, well, but we need not just it's not the climate policy has to be directed at farmers. It has to be something that will benefit them immediately. Um, water, water, and um, climate and resilience. Yeah, I would. Also, another thought that I have is so just that... sorry, Melissa. Just um, sorry to interrupt you, but um, just uh, I, I set my hand up just to, to I was going to say a couple of things on that, but just just to note, um, we are running up to eight o'clock Eastern time, um, and so we will need to start the uh policy meeting very very soon. So um, I'm going to need to drop off. Um, and I think a few probably a few other people may need to so that we can get uh get started with that. Um, and so I think as I drop off, it'll stop the recording. Um, but yeah. Can I just ask, Michael? I thought this was we were using this link for the policy meeting. Um. Oh. Uh. Someone else might be able to confirm that. Um. Maybe we are able to switch into that. But um. If that's possible, that's uh, well, we can do that. I just but I wouldn't want to make we we might want to confirm that just to make sure that we don't have uh people jumping into a different link who had RSVP'd for it. Thank you, everyone, for joining. Yeah. Uh, is the policy meeting specifically for policy committee or is it open? Is it open? Oh, to... It's open. Um, yeah, it's open. So that we had a sort of RSVPs for it, but um, yeah, we'll be we'll be um, that's the these these working groups. The idea is for them to be open. They will still be structured. Um, we'll need to make sure that the there's probably a lot of people that'll have um lots to say, and um, and, and Peter who'll be running that will will um will sort of will be able to explain that. Um. Uh, Bri or Peter, do you have the uh, do you have a confirmation on that link? I'm just pulling that up now. I'm just trying to find I'm it. I'm looking for it. Yeah, I'm just going to my emails to get the RSVP. Um, based on that, I'll, I'll just I'll stop the recording here, just so we're sort of transitioning away.